exactly what you're going to get, fella. I'm a journalist, as you're probably aware, and yeah, I got my first break in the big old apple. Probably when I was just a little younger than you, my dear. See, I knew exactly what I wanted to do, and I saw the opportunities all around me, so I just had to go and get it. I find it really irritating when people who don't work to get to places complain about the opportunities and situations that they're in. I mean, you know what I mean, right? Sure, have your kids, raise them and all, but what about your own life? That's why I don't speak to my girlfriend from school. Yeah, they were motivated for a while after we graduated, but then all their hard work just went out the window. Not me, you see, though. I'm not easily swayed, you see, Samuel. It is okay if I continue, isn't it, dear? Yes, yeah, sure, I just I like know. to reminisce. All right, thank you. Like I said, it all began in New York City. I started writing for a weekly advice column for a local newspaper. It wasn't anything exciting, but it was a start. It was the same old problem, same shit. Women complaining about their trust issues with their men, and men complaining about their sex life. It took a while for me to get into that frame of mind, but as I say, persistence is key. I moved into an apartment in Manhattan. It wasn't anything amazing, but you know, it was in the city, and we had no boundaries. My roommate was my rock. He was my laughter and my warmth in dull times. Not afraid, not at all. I watched them all as they fall, but I remember when we were young. Those with habits of ways, the sense of style. Utterly disgusting. What is? Oh, um, it's a, it's a headline in uh, this. That's it. Eh. What do you mean, eh? I just don't see the big deal. They're basically sensationalising a well-known fact. Hyperbole is a classic journalistic practice for simple Joshua. They should basically have a headline saying, the sky's blue and this should scare you. Yeah, but like, they're writing what's very obviously an opinion piece as fact, and when you start doing that, you get into some dangerous territory. Well, if you see it as an opinion and not a fact, then I guess so, but it doesn't necessarily get my barren ovaries in a twist like it does yours, Joshua. Uh, but it should! Well, it doesn't, so what are you going to do about it? Uh. I met Joshua at a bar where he worked when he was only 18. He, like me, wanted some independence, and he couldn't afford to pay rent on his own, so we decided to move in together. He'd hit a bit of a dead end, really, working at this bar, and to this day I never really knew how he ended up there. I never let his surname. He had rules, you see. Certain questions which were never asked, regarding family and just stuff like that. They were alive, he assured me. He just didn't need them around anymore. I'm guessing their approval in his lifestyle was a benefactor in their falling out.
Joshua was a life art, you see. A little bit like <laughs> Alistair, but untamed. He wasn't physically violent, but my god, that motherfucker could throw a tantrum. Joshua's dreams change every week from actors. I would like a burger and uh, fries. Uh, no, the line's hot dog and fries. No, no, it's, it's definitely burger. No, it's hot dogs. No. <laughs> to model, to singer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck off! he wanted to be exactly, but he just knew he wanted to make it big. Joshua was very promiscuous, you see. He'd bring back all kinds of girls, pretty much whoever was easy enough for him to grab when his shift was over. He'd bring them back and disrupt my beauty sleep. Joshua's relations before. That was his business, but now he was just being careless. Every headline was talking about the gay plague, and now he decides he wants to be adventurous? He dare risk his own health and potentially mine. I was not going to tolerate it. No way. And for all I know, this may not have even been the first time.
Why not? Some, uh, some dick we, uh, beat, beat me up after, uh, I, I hit on this, this girl. Oh. Yeah. Hey, Josh. Hi. I see you come here all the time with all these different people. I hear you every night. Oh, uh, if, if, if this is a complaint, um, no, the landlord's... No, 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 it's not like that. I was just wondering before I even ever tried it on me. Oh, um, okay. Luna, uh, I, I respect you as a person and as a woman, and I don't want to ruin what this is. Uh, I, I, I guess a good way of, of saying it is, like, I care about you too much, so I don't want to fuck you? Yeah, that that's pretty... that's a pretty poorly worded account of what I'm trying to say, basically. What's he talking about, Josh? <laughs> well, uh, I'll try, but... Hmm. No, no prom promise, promises. I left a few days after I'd found out I'd pay the rent for the next month. I packed my things and I went. Several weeks later I'd heard that his drink had been spiked and poisoned. He was just so careless, he didn't know how to look after himself or be responsible. I warned him still, but I was so long gone from New York at this point. I'm so sorry to hear that, Luna. It must have felt horrible to hear that after you had left. It's alright, dear. My only regret is that I didn't help him more. I was five years older than him, I should have helped him get a new job, keep him out of that damn bar. I'll never forget him though. And whilst that was the end of his life, my own was just starting to get rather fulfilling.